Well, hi everyone. I have a treat for you all today, I think, and that is I've got drone footage of the Middle Fork Bridge over the Blue Mesa on US 50 in Western Colorado, as well as the Companion Bridge about five miles to the west, the Lake Fork Bridge. I'm really happy with how this drone footage came out. It took quite a bit of effort to arrange for someone to actually go out there and, and do this drone work. So to that end, I wanna thank Skywalker Drone Imagery. They're the ones that collected the footage for this video. Also, if you're inclined to support the increased production value, which comes at a cost for these videos, please consider becoming a member. There's also super thanks, and I've just added buy me a coffee. Uh, the link for that is in the description. I certainly appreciate all the support you all provide. So a couple of weeks ago, the Colorado Department of Transportation announced that two-way traffic, in other words, if traffic's been fully restored to the Middle Fork Bridge on Wednesday, November 13th, that bridge was limited to one lane throughout the summer once repairs began in June. And as a refresher, I'll briefly go over what the repairs were and why they were needed for this and the Companion Bridge, uh, Lake Fork Bridge, a few miles to the west. So I'm gonna start out with footage of the Middle Fork Bridge. This drone footage for both bridge locations was recorded on Friday, November 22nd. As a refresher, the red dot here is location of the Middle Bridge over Blue Mesa Reservoir. And uh, this dot corresponds on this aerial photo to Middle Bridge. And then we have Lake Fork Bridge, which is about five miles to the west near the town of Saperino. We'll just show a Google Earth image and zoom out here. And you can just see the general location of these bridges in this region of Colorado. Now, Federal Highways Administration realized a few years ago that they potentially had problems with bridges that were fabricated using T1 steel. And the issue was due to hydrogen embrittlement of the wells, which caused cracking. Now, it was thought that most of these cracks, if not all of them, developed initially during construction. And then over time, with cyclic loading of repeated traffic passes over the years, caused these cracks to open and propagate further. So Federal Highways Administration mandated that the wells for these types of bridges be non-destructively tested to make sure there was no cracks. Earlier this year, Colorado DOT conducted non-destructive testing for the Middle Fork Bridge and found at least one cracked weld. And this led to a much more intensive program of non-destructive testing, and they recorded a couple of hundred cracks throughout the bridge. This is a US DOT slide from a few years ago, and it indicated at the time Colorado had a total of five bridges in their inventory that was made with this T1 steel. So I don't know what the other three are. I think that's something I'm gonna look into. But this is the crack that they first discovered on the Middle Fork Bridge. And then of course they decided they needed to not only repair uh, these cracked locations, but also do the same thing in terms of a very thorough and complete non-destructive uh, evaluation of the welds for the bridge to the west, the Lake Fork Bridge. Now Ashto has guidelines for field repairs and retrofits of steel bridges. And here's an example, it's a common fix for this situation is they bolt a piece of steel over the member to bridge the location of the crack. And this was from earlier in the year when they were preparing to do this repair work on the Middle Fork Bridge. And I did an update a few months ago when they were doing this repair work back in July, actually started in June and got going in earnest in July. And uh, I was surprised at the lack of photos or videos that were provided by either the news media or Colorado DOT. So I was extremely curious about how this repair work has, has been going and what it looked like. And that's why I commissioned the drone flights. So Kiwit Transportation, Kiwit Infrastructure, got the contract for this emergency repair. And they had these large plates fabricated with uh, bolt holes. And of course they had mapped out all these locations from the non-destructive testing. This was the location of the original crack, and these are the areas that they had planned to install these plates. So let's just go through some more of this drone footage. We're coming up on the Middle Fork Bridge here. Very picturesque. Looks like it's starting to get uh, cold in this area. A little bit of snow up in the hills. This bridge was constructed in 1963, and I believe the Lake Fork Bridge to the west is of similar age. It's certainly of similar construction. So you have to wonder at what point are they gonna end up replacing this bridge considering most bridges at that time that were built had a design life of around 50 years. 
So we're well past 60 years at this point. So we're just going to cruise around here. We've got close-up images here that I'll get to in a second. So all this repair work was done at the location of these deeper girders. You can see some of this plate being bolted to the right on this girder. We're going to get some views here underneath. Tremendous amount of work. It's really impressive how they maintain their schedule for getting this bridge fully reopened. They still have to finish painting it. They'll wait till the spring to do that. That is to paint the location of these plates and bolts. Tremendous amount of work. So we'll see the transition here from the shallower to deeper girders. I suspect, uh, at least to my knowledge, this is the most extensive repair of this type done to a bridge in the United States. I understand that they used over 250 tons of steel plate and over 25,000 bolts to affect this repair of the middle bridge. So very, very impressive to me. But again, I have to wonder at what point will they eventually replace the bridge in its entirety. Obviously, it takes several years to plan, design, and construct a new bridge. And given how critical this US-50 route was to Western Colorado, they had to do something to get this bridge reopened to traffic quickly and then plan for a full replacement in the future. And I'm sure somebody did detailed calculations to make sure that the bridge could tolerate all this additional weight from the steel plate and bolts. These are excellent drone shots. Really pleased with it. So again, just gives you an idea of the overall extent and scope of this repair. And of course, the Lake Fork Bridge is undergoing a similar repair, but not to the same extent that has occurred for this middle bridge. And I'm going to get to footage of the Lake Fork Bridge here in just a moment. Very clear day for capturing drone footage. Not much traffic on this bridge. I imagine the peak traffic occurs in the summer. But uh, there were a few cars passing over when uh, the drone footage was collected. Now let's go over to the Lake Fork Bridge. This bridge is still undergoing repair work and it's anticipated that this repair work will be completed sometime in December with only painting of the plates and bolts to occur in the spring when it's warmer. You can see they've closed a lane off just as they did for the middle bridge and they have to route traffic one direction at a time. You can see the yellow and black Kiwit truck on top of the bridge deck. You can see these work platforms that they've erected to get access to these girders in order to install these plates and bolts. Very picturesque. Here in a moment we'll zoom in to see more details for the repair. It's obviously similar to what they did on the Middle Fork Bridge, but we'll come in here and get a closer look. Very calm day for a drone flight. Just another overhead view of what they are doing to facilitate this repair. All right, let's come in and get a closer look at things. All 
All right, see the plates that are bolted on, just have primer on them. Again, the final painting will occur in the spring. And I'm just gonna let this footage roll so you can get an idea of the extent of the repair work for the Lake Fork Bridge here. I didn't see a breakdown for the total amount of steel used for the Lake Fork Bridge, but uh, it's a much smaller bridge and I think the number of locations that had to be addressed was significantly less than that for the middle bridge. You see this work platform that they've erected to get access to the sides and underneath the girder uh, to bolt these steel plates into position. I love this footage. Again, I've been extremely curious to see that how this work was being done. You know, it involves a considerable effort just to install these access platforms. Sure, the locals be extremely pleased when this bridge is fully reopened to traffic with travel in each direction here sometime in December. So in the next two or three weeks, I suspect it'll be fully opened. Some views underneath the bridge. You can note the contrast between the darker gray primer color in the repair area versus the more silvery color that was the existing paint on the bridge. I think it's an extremely impressive repair job that they've done here. It's interesting to me to see the difference in execution among the various DOTs across the country in terms of getting emergency repairs implemented. I think Colorado DOT has done an excellent job here, as well as uh, their contractor, Keywood Infrastructure. So hopefully you all enjoyed this very detailed drone footage. This has been a rather popular story, uh, a series of stories that I've done on this channel. With that, I'd like to send a shout out to the channel members. I really appreciate your ongoing support, as well as those of you who've provided super thanks. I'm gonna roll credits at the end. Let me know what you think about incorporating drone footage into these video updates, and uh, give me any other ideas that you may have about future video topics or techniques for addressing these stories in future videos. I really appreciate it, and please stay tuned for future videos.